So I got to praise him. I, 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 I don't have any other choice. I got to praise him. We give all praises to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor our pastor, Pastor Eric A. Holder. Yay! And we thank him for this opportunity because we know that God has assigned him to this secret desk. We honor our first lady, Lady Tony Holder. Happy Mother's Day! <laughs> we honor all of our preachers, deacons, trustees, officers, and all of you. We know God is good, don't we? Yeah, we do. And I honor my husband. He's not here today. He's recovering, but I honor him as well. Um, Y'all know he had knee surgery, right? Yeah, well, he did. <laughs> so he's coming along. Thank you all for your prayers. And I want to especially thank all of the mothers. God bless you. Uh, Sister Cotton preached a powerful word yesterday about mothers. And I thank God for her. Lord have mercy. We standing in the gap, y'all. We are standing in the gap. And you know, it's, 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 it's like... We really do the best we can. We really, really do. Um, but sometimes our babies go which way they want to go. But we still pray for them. And we know that if we keep on praying, if we keep on asking, that God will make a way. Because he made a way for he made, huh? To say it loud, like you black. Yeah, he made, a, <laughs> he made a way for you. Oh, and I'm so excited about the junior ushers today. I am so excited about them. Oh, my goodness. God is so good. And I know that Sister Q is, she happy too, right? But she'll have to stand back there today, so... I'm glad for the junior ushers. Um, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to hold y'all long, so we're going to have prayer. We're just going get, to get, get it going, okay? Um, but I'm going to tell y'all where I'm coming from. I'm coming from Proverbs. Y'all know that Proverbs 31 woman, right? Well, that's where I'm coming from. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you today, O oh God, for your goodness and your mercy towards us. O oh God, we don't know where we might be if it wasn't for you on our side. So, dear Jesus, now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength, and you are my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name that I do pray this prayer. And I do say amen. So we are coming from, oh, I thought it was up there. We're coming from Proverbs, the 31st chapter, and I'm only going to read two verses. But when you all get home, read the whole thing. Just go on and read the whole thing. But I'm going to read verses 10, and I'm going to read verses 28. And it says, who can find a virtuous woman? That's a question, y'all. For her price is far above rubies. And then in verse 28, it says, her children arise up and called her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. God bless you. Now, if I had to put a title 
to this message, it would be striving to be like her. Now, I know that we got this young lady, and her initials are H period, E period, R period, right? Huh? Yeah. Uh huh. But that ain't the her that I'm talking about. <laughs> I just want y'all to know that that is not the her that I'm talking about. Now, I don't know about you. But back in the day, there was this woman that I was striving to be like. Not because she had a relationship with the Lord. Not because she was trying to win souls to Christ. Because that was the furthest thing from my mind at the time. But this woman was striving to be, I'm sorry, I was striving to be like this woman. And this woman's name was Angela Davis. Anybody remember Angela Davis back in the day? I was striving to emulate her because of her political activism. She was militant. You remember her. She was militant and she ain't take no stuff from nobody. St. Angela Davis was bold and unabashed about what she believed in. She said what she meant, and she meant what she said. And even though I didn't understand much of her political views, I saw her as a strong black woman who spoke out against the establishment. But if I keep it real, <laughs> Rev. Vance, in actuality, I was really trying to be like her because of her, that perfect <laughs> every hair in place afro. Anybody in here remember Angela Davis and her perfect afro? You see, back then, I knew very little about God and hardly anything about his word. Back then, you could say I was trying to find myself not realizing that even if I found myself and didn't have Jesus, I was wasting my time. Somebody better talk back to me today because some of y'all were just like me, headed to hell in a handbasket. And I will be the first to admit today that I have not arrived, but I thank God that I'm on the journey. So the question for us on the second day in May, when we celebrate motherhood, is who can find a virtuous woman? That's what the word says. So what does the Bible say that a virtuous woman looks like? And what makes this woman in Proverbs virtuous? Because some folk like me, after reading these verses, Minister Barbara, would probably say this woman is a superwoman. So I don't know if we can ever reach her prominence, but we can all try. And that includes you two brothers, because we can all strive to be virtuous. Because being virtuous is not exclusive to women but it is inclusive because it lets us know what we should look like in the sight of Almighty God. And listen, I'm not just talking to the older women like me, but I'm talking to all of us, all of those sitting in the sanctuary and those that are on Facebook. We should all be striving to be like her. Anybody in here striving to be like this woman that we're going to talk about today? This virtuous woman who is an example for everybody that professes to have a relationship with the Lord. But wait a minute. Before we commit, we need to know what this word virtuous means. Because we can't strive to be virtuous if we don't know what it means to be virtuous. So I looked it up. Brother Burrell, in my American Heritage Dictionary, 
And it said that the root word for virtuous is virtue. Now, when we think about virtue, we think about a quality of moral excellence, ethical rightness, responsibility, righteousness, goodness, and purity. That was her character, y'all. And if you notice, this virtuous woman is not named in the text. And with most of us, that's all right. Because we're not working in the kingdom to have our names called. But we're working trying to make heaven our home. So this unnamed woman described in the Bible as a virtuous woman, the Bible says that her, she had a price that was far beyond rubies. Now we have to understand that during biblical times, Rubies were the most precious of all gemstones. Today we always hear the expression that diamonds are girls' best friend. But back during the biblical days, uh, diamonds were considered common in comparison to rubies. And on this Mother's Day, what the text is saying to us is that spiritual value is far greater than rubies, diamonds, gold, and silver. So every now and then, my brothers and sisters, we need to ask ourselves the question, not what is my financial worth, but what is my spiritual worth? Because after all, that's all that matters on this side of heaven and on the other side of heaven. Let me say that again. We must ask ourselves the question, what is my spiritual value? Have we ever thought about this? Because let's face it, we operate in this physical world so much that sometimes we neglect the spiritual. You see, the first thing that I noticed about this woman is that she knew who she was and whom she belonged to. That's why she could honor God. Too many folk today that profess Christ think they belong to themselves. They say it's all about me and what I want to do and how I want to do it. But my Bible lets me know that once we make a profession of faith, in other words, once we repent of our sins and ask Jesus to come into our hearts, we are no longer our own because we've been bought with a price and the price that was paid for our pardon or calvary was paid by the lord jesus christ's death on the cross so that now our bodies might be the temple of the holy ghost so i can imagine this unnamed woman saying lord not my will but let your will be done in my life because you see, saints, this virtual woman didn't honor God with her lips and her heart was far away. But she honored him by the way she lived and the way she gave of herself to him. I can imagine her saying, Lord, I give myself away so you can use me. Can he use anybody in here today? This woman honored God with her daily devotions. She honored him with the way she put her trust in him. She honored him by the way she gave herself to him. She didn't care what the world was doing. She didn't even care what her neighbors thought about her. She didn't care if they called her Miss Goody Two Shoes. It didn't matter to her that her uh, uh, didn't, that she didn't have any girlfriends to gossip with because she didn't have time for that anyway. This woman was about kingdom building. She probably told the ladies in her community, I don't have time to get on the phone and talk about folk when there's so much work to be done because I got a, a, a charge to keep and a God to glorify. She probably told them, you can continue to do you. But as for me, 
I must be about my father's business. And let's face it, ooh, I'm gonna get ready, get ready, get, get, get in trouble. Some of this technology done messed us up, y'all. Yeah, I said it. The regular telephone was bad enough. But these cell phones, Zelda, they got us messed up. We have become addicted to these things because it's one of Satan's devices that we have become ignorant of. And let me tell you something. The devil is so bad that he can't get you with one thing, then he'll get you with another. Listen to what I'm saying. When cell phones first came out and I saw folks so distracted talking on them that they would walk off of subway station platforms, I knew we were going to have some trouble regulating them. Listen, church, I'll say it again. This woman didn't just honor God with her lips, but she honored God with the way that she lived. Anybody in here striving to be like her today? All right, now. Secondly, this woman didn't just sit around every day watching the bold and the beautiful general hospital and the young and the restless because she realized that there's always kingdom work to do in her family and outside of her family. This woman understood that idleness, come on y'all, is the devil's workshop. So she was diligent and deliberate in the things that she did in her home and outside of her home. I'm sure that she considered within herself that only what she did for God would last. Listen, this woman understood that her children were her responsibility, not the government's, not the school system, not some mentor or big brother or big sister. So she made sure that her children grew up to know who God is. And I'm sure that she not only taught them about God, but how to praise and worship him. I'm sure that this woman wasn't as concerned about her children's secular education as she was about their religious education. Because she knew that if they did what they did for God, was supposed to do for God spiritually, then he would bless them anyhow. Seems the opposite today, doesn't it? Everybody wants their children to go to the best schools and to get the best grades. But they don't care if they go to church or have a relationship with the Lord. Something is wrong with that picture. Listen, y'all, nobody had to beg this woman to do God's work. This woman was available to her God. Are we available to God? There's so much to be done in the church of the living God today. Sometimes we need to take our focus off ourselves and ask the question, what can I do to make my church run more smoothly? What can I do to help this ministry? What can I do to help develop our church? What can I do to help disciple our new members? What can I do to take some of the responsibility of the uh, daily operations off my pastor? Sister Gloria Wilson came to me not too long ago and she said, I want to help you with new members. That's what I'm talking about. Minister Dildy has been a godsend in helping and teaching master life classes and in modernizing the process. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. And as much as the laborers are needed inside the church, these same laborers are needed on the outside of the church. Who have we invited to come to church lately? 
Who have we given the plan of salvation to lately? You know, a person doesn't have to come to church for us to give them the plan of salvation, right? How often do we pray to God that he would send folks saved and unsaved uh, that need to be rededicated to, to the church? Listen, y'all, we got to compel them to come. Isn't that what the words say? Well, they might get tired of me asking and trying to avoid me at all costs, but I would rather get on their nerves than have their souls burn in hell. Oh, did I mention, I think Jesus is coming back before we think he is. Come on, y'all. Let's strive to be like this woman. And lastly, this woman didn't make excuses. Mm -mm -mm. She was responsible. She was dependable. She was reliable. She had already counted the cost. And she wasn't going to let anything or anybody turn her away from her God. Several weeks ago, I was talking to the Lord, and he laid in my spirit, people can go to work for 40 hours a week and can't give God three hours in church on Sunday. Y'all, something is wrong with that picture. There are reasons why we come together to worship. And now we got folk running around talking about, I want to be spiritual. I don't want to be religious. Because they don't want to affiliate themselves with a denomination. And that's a trick of the enemy. To divide and conquer. Because the last time I checked the Bible, the word of the living God, it said, uh, Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Sometimes, y'all, we get in our own way. You see, this woman knew that the devil is always busy, and she knew that he didn't want her to serve the Lord. Saints, we've got to get to the point where we can see past what we see with these natural eyes. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you start trying to serve the Lord, when you start trying to honor the Lord with your life, the devil will try anything and everything. And he and his imps are steady watching to see who is weak and who is vulnerable. Paul said it like this. When I would do good. When I would do good. Zelda. When I would do good, evil is always present. That ain't me talking. That's what the words say. Our problem is we can't see evil with these natural eyes. And our spiritual eyes are fogged up because many of us lack spiritual wisdom. And the devil likes it that way. Because you know this old saying, out of sight, out of mind. How often do you think about the tricks and the schemes that the devil uses against you? Never, right? <laughs> Listen, that's why we got to put on the whole arm of God. That's what the Bible says. Too many folk who profess to be in Christ walking around without their armor on. Come on, Master Life. We got to put on the whole armor daily so that we can protect ourselves from the wiles of the devil because Satan will set up strongholds in our lives. So I don't know about you on this Mother's Day Sunday, but I'm going to put on my helmet of salvation. I'm going to put on my breastplate of righteousness. I got my sword of the spirit. My shield of faith, my gospel shoes, and my belt of truth. Saints, I'm striving to be like this Proverbs 31 woman because I'm so grateful. So grateful for what the Lord has done for me.
What did he do for you? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'll never forget what the Lord has done for me. He touched my life one day. He turned me around and he placed my feet on a solid ground. Now he didn't have to do it, but he did. And I'm so grateful. He allowed me to have a personal cue intimate relationship with him. And I'm glad, y'all, I'm glad that he suffered for me. Now, I I don't know about y'all, but this is deep. This is real deep. Because I don't know if I'm going to suffer for too many folk. I don't know if somebody put a gun to my head and said, it's either you or Deacon Buxton. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. So, so the God that we serve, <laughs> the, God, the God that we serve, y'all, he is awesome. He is wonderful. He is so good. And look what he did. Look what he did for us. And think about it. He did not have to do it. I mean, that's the thing that blows my mind. I see you, Rhonda. He didn't have to do it. But he thought enough of us that he would let them beat him. It should have been us. That he would allow them to put a a sword in his side. It should have been us. That he would allow them to put a crown of thorns on his head and the blood came running down his face, y'all. It should have been us. That they would put a nail in his right hand and in his left hand and a nail in his feet. It should have been us. But he loved us so much he loved us so much that he would go to an old rugged cross for us for me and for you but I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm so so glad that that's not how the story is because somebody told me that on the third day my lord and your savior got up he got up he got up 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 with all power in his hands in his hands in his hands Every time I think about what Jesus did for me, and see, you got to make this thing personal. Every time I think about what he did for me, I'm finished. Hey, baby boy. God bless you. I'm going to ask everybody that's able to stand that you would stand today. And just think about it. Think about how blessed you are that you have a relationship with the creator with the creator and the sustainer of this universe you got to understand that everybody doesn't have the relationship 
Because they have not given their lives to Christ. So as much as we want, or let me say it like this, because I don't know about y'all, but as much, Minister Barbara, as I want everybody to go to heaven, I know that everybody is not going to heaven. You have to have a relationship with the Lord. You have to turn your life over to him. And the thing that's scary to me, y'all, since I'm almost 75, and I can look at Annie Green, the time that I was coming up and what's going on today, and I'm telling you the truth. I be just like sitting down waiting for Jesus to come because I'm like, this stuff is not sustainable. It really is not sustainable what is going on, not just in the United States, because I watch MSNBC all the time. I'm letting y'all know that. But it's like all over the world. All over the world. So I'm just going to say, if there's anybody here today that don't know Jesus in the free pardon of your sins, in other words, you've never repented and asked God to come into your life, I'm going to ask that you would come to the front and give your life to Christ right now. And you can't be ashamed of doing it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Jesus ain't ashamed of you. So if you do not have a relationship with the Lord, I'm going to ask that you would walk up to the front. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Just walk up to the front and know that Jesus is the one that you want to be looking at you. And then, if there's somebody here that joined the church a long time ago or whenever, and then you went back out into the world, well, this is your opportunity to come back. Come on back to the Lord. Give God your hand. And then lastly, if you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a church home, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love up on you. I'm going to get on your nerves. But we're going to have a good time. So, Ron, you agree with everything I say today. That's unusual. <laughs> but thank you, sweetheart. Um... Did I see you shake your hand too? Trustee Buxton, did I see you? Praise the Lord. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Something is happening. <laughs> but anyway, on those three, if, if you don't know the Lord, you've never repented, and you want to have a relationship with him, come on. Come on down. Come on. Or, or raise your hand. I'll come and get you because I love you. Come on. If, you're, if you want to uh, rededicate your life to him, come on. Come on. Raise your head up. Look at me. Come on. And, and lastly, if you're looking for a church home, come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. We love you. Amen. Is it, it, wait a minute, is the whole house saved? Is the whole house saved? If you're saved, then you know you're saved. Clap your hands. Wave your hands. Do something. Yeah, yeah. All right, God bless you. God bless you. Pastor, do I have, I have your permission? All right, let us look to the Lord. 
Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and bide in our hearts. Now, henceforth, and forevermore, let the people of God say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Oh, one minute, one minute.